Hello, I am, I don't know what I am. And I am going to be making uh, another sewing tutorial. I call it a tutorial, it's not really a tutorial. It's sort of a walkthrough, if you will. The last garment that I made was a sort of pajama set. And so I have this other set that is blue. My last one was yellow. This one's blue and red, and it's also very soft and very pretty. I think it's rayon because it's really, it's really cool to the touch and very nice quality. For usually fairly expensive if you buy it, you know, from Joann's or whatever. Um, else sells it. So I've got this fabric. I wanted to make something similar, but not exactly the same and explain my process a little bit more. So I sketched up an idea that I would like to do kind of based on some other pieces of clothing that I have that I really like. Uh, which I will show you. Uh, I'm very excited about this because I, I really want some more items of clothing that are just like stretchy and comfortable. My my ideal clothing is stuff that I can wear both out of the house and then wear it to bed. <laughs> like the skirt. Wait, wait, wait. This is one of my favorite dresses because it's so comfy. This used to be what I would wear uh, to travel. I used to do a lot of plain travel before you know, everything happened and it was perfect. But then I stopped wearing it to travel because it turns out um, when you wear something that has big pleats like this, they're gonna frisk you <laughs> like every time. <laughs> and one of them, I was like, why am I getting frisked every time? And one of them was like, yeah, it's cause you've got these gigantic pleats here and they gotta check and make sure you're not hiding anything in those pleats. So I had to stop wearing it. Yeah, all right, I'm rambling. So I'm just gonna get started. I'm also in my aunt's basement right now, which is where this lovely mat is. And I kind of need to get one of these for myself because usually I'm run, crawling around on the floor and my knees hurt so badly, but this is great. This is good. I, I need to get some of these little kid mats. So the first thing is the top. This is a really simple top. It's basically just a half circle with like a, a line cut here. So, and then it's seamed right here to give you a sort of like a torso shape. And then this is just like free cloth. Building a nice large piece of paper to do my patterning on. Even though the whole point of getting a roll of paper so that I don't have to do this, still better than taping together 27 pieces of printer paper. Aha, I've got this. I haven't used this since like the day that I left fashion department in college. But this might actually work really well here. But since I forgot to bring a pencil down with me, I'm gonna try this. Oh yeah. The benefit of having a soft mat underneath is that this just glides right here. And I'm just gonna mark sort of where these lines go. These little holes where I rolled over it with my little pizza cutter. Now, I need to make sure that the pattern is symmetrical. So what I'm doing making two halves that are actually did a pretty good job the first time around, but this will make sure that both sides are the same. I don't really have anything else, so I'm just gonna mark it with this chalk. And this is the, the back neckline, but I might want to take it in a little bit more because the original is quite 
far over on my shoulders. So I'm gonna just make this line go in a little further here and connect it that way. Just so that the head hole isn't quite as big because I don't really want it falling off my shoulders. end point there. I don't know if you can see any of this. Okay, so you can see these pink pink lines um, are where the sort of like actual edge of the garment is and where the seam lines are. And now I've got to make the seam allowance. So I'm going to do a half inch seam allowance. I just measure half inch from this line and then just mark out half inch every, every little bit. I do a little trick with my pattern, which is that I draw the front neckline and the back line on the same pattern piece. And then I just notch the pattern so that I can use both. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, it doesn't go in that deep. So I'm gonna just estimate it about here and then connect my lines. And you always wanna make sure that the center is like a 90 degree angle. So it should come squarely, it should meet squarely there. And then I do the same thing, make my seam allowance here, match it up to my other seam allowance. Okay, so now this is basically my full pattern piece. So we've got this back piece. Now, this is my front line. So I'm actually going to cut up to that line in like maybe half inch increments. And as you do the front, you can take these little tabs and just fold them inwards so that you can create your appropriate front neckline. I don't know if I was taught this or if I made this up, honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> but this is the trick I've used pretty much every time. So then you can just draw your front neckline and you still have your back piece if you ever need it. If you're creating a stretchy garment or really any garment, really, what you want to do is you want to follow the grain line. Um, generally speaking, that just means that if you get a roll of fabric, you know, it's going to come like this. There's going to be like a long a length to it. Um, so when you fold it in half like this, you know, it should kind of like go out in front of you. You fold it in half. Um, this so this way is going to be much stretchier than this way. This, this way is a little bit stretchy because it's stretch fabric, but you really want the, the part of your garment that goes sideways to have the most stretch in it. And that is for both for comfort, for fitting reasons. It's it's easier to get in and out of something that stretches sideways. And also because if the stretch goes up and down, then eventually your garment might um, distort. Like especially with dresses, like with heavy dresses and with heavy fabrics, the hemline will eventually get really crooked and weird because it wasn't cut properly on the grain. So if that makes sense, keep that in mind. I am going to do it like this. Oh no, I'm wasting fabric, aren't I? I don't want to do that. Is there a better way to do this? I wonder if there is because it's just a nightmare. And I want to make this 100% right up to this line here. And I'm going to use my new tailor's chalk that I just got, which I'm very excited about. I've never had any before. I've always wanted some. So let's see how it works. Uh, yeah, you know what? That might not work so well. All right. Thanks. Plenty. My actual chalk. Okay, 
so this is the front. Ooh, very cute. Oh, well, the back. No, sorry, this is the back. So it's got these kind of like long sleeves then. This is interesting. I may not have enough fabric for pants. I guess this shirt is a little bit bigger than I realized. And I do not plan out my fabric. I'm going to very briefly try this on inside out as kind of a poncho and see where everything sits and try not to stab myself with any pins. Yeah, I feel like the neckline is good. And now I'm gonna take a break because my back is killing me. I actually forgot to fold I was supposed to fold over this edge before connecting it here to the seam uh, because this is now on the inside and this little tip is gonna stick above the collar uh, so that's not great I should have done that a little bit differently but it works for now Just going to press all my um, hems and seams so that they lie flat because a lot of this is kind of wiggly as you can see there and pressing it will take all of that out. I'm putting it on a pretty low setting because this is a synthetic fabric I think or at least it's a stretch fabric and you don't want it to shrink when you iron it. Um, probably should be ironing on the reverse side but because I've got this seam here it it's going to make it too difficult, so I'm just going to go for it. Hopefully nothing gets discolored. It looks fine so far. I should have done this in an earlier step, honestly, but this shoulder seam line is kind of crooked and weird. You can see how it's kind of bubbly. So I'm gonna iron that flat as well. You wanna make sure that the seam is going in the same way along the whole thing. Make sure underneath the seam is um, pushed to one side. 
is my iron seam. This is my not iron seam. You can see how it kind of rolls in on itself and it's just not as pretty or nice. It's hard to see on the dark fabric, but it's there. And there you have it, finished piece. I'm gonna go try it on. Feels good. I think I'm probably gonna make this just a part, two part video, three part video, whatever, because um, it's already gonna be quite long just with this shirt. And like I mentioned earlier, I had a bit of a fabric quantity issue. So I'll have to think about what I'm gonna do. I might do the pants in a different fabric because I do have something that I think will kind of work, will kind of match. Anyway, so yeah, I'll, I'll just, I think I'll do this video separately and then I'll do the pants in the next one. Bye.